you remember any particularly interesting schizophrenic hallucinations that you had? Yes. When I was in Indiana, I got a knock on the door. And it was my boss from Taco Bell up in Michigan. And I stood there and talked to him for a good 10 minutes. At least that's what I perceived it to be. And then before I knew it, just poof, he was gone. I was standing there talking to no one. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was definitely just meth and deuce. Hello? What is your name? My name is Andrew. Andrew, what's going on? I am making a pizza, sitting on a couch. You are making a pizza. <laughs> and if I heard, and, and, and did I hear this correctly? You are also sitting on the couch as you make well, said the pizza, pizza. The pizza the, has just entered the oven, and the I pizzas. have switched over to the couch while the timer goes. Houston, the pizza has entered the oven. True. You are making a pizza and sitting on the couch. How do you feel making a pizza and sitting on the couch? Not too bad. Um, nothing to complain about, really. Been kind of bored. Yeah. Sometimes, it, sometimes a boring life is good. I think you gotta kind of um, you gotta have that. I don't think I used to think that life had to be remarkable like a hundred percent of the time. And I, yeah, I, you absolutely. know, I. Uh, I still, I would be lying if I said that I still don't want life to be remarkable. But I also, I really do feel like uh, the standard for remarkability can be quite low and you can still hit it. Like in a way, there's something remarkable about eating a frozen pizza and life can be remarkable in that sense. I do, I do believe that. In a way. Yeah. I had a very remarkable last few years. But tell me more. I'd say my boring life right now is tremendously better. Tell me tell me more about why your remarkable life is not as, as good as Tell me why the boring life you live is better than the remarkable two years that you have had. Well, I got sober um November of last year. Um I was having multiple surgeries throughout the year for my kidney because I was doing too much drugs, not drinking water, and not legal trouble, but I was definitely on the brink for a while. Was so this... I'm sober. What? Sorry, go ahead. I want to let you finish. No, you go ahead. Uh, was this was this alcohol? Was it drugs? Was it all of it? It was meth, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. What? Well, how? So, how long had you been doing meth for? Uh, it was probably like three and a half years, but I was on other stuff before that. Like okay. ever since I was fifteen, I was on something. Okay. So, I mean, give me the story of the whole two years, if you want. Um, there's not much to it. Like, I was in a pretty dark place and. I figured I just wanted to try it. Like, I was already into stimulants and uppers, so I was like, might as well try the ultimate high there. And definitely led to even darker places, which I expected. It's not like I got anything that was too surprising, but there's definitely a dash of schizophrenia that comes with <laughs> a lot of meth use. So. Did you have schizophrenia before the meth, or did you take the meth... And the meth was like, hey, there's a guy behind you. No, right I had no signs of schizophrenia. It was definitely just meth-induced. And uh, since okay. I've gotten sober, it's not like I'm still schizophrenic. Do you remember but any... Do, do you remember, like, from when you did smoke meth, smoke meth, do you remember any particularly interesting schizophrenic hallucinations that you had? Yes. I have my favorite one I ever had. It wasn't my favorite at the time. It was actually terrifying, but... I was driving down the road at like 3 a.m. I was up for a few days and I had no visuals leading up to this. Like I didn't experience anything. And I looked in my rear view mirror and there was three humanoid foxes sprinting after my car side by side to each other. And as soon as I saw it, it just like poofed gone. But when I saw it, my fucking heart sank. Okay, so you're driving down the highway 3 a.m. high on meth and you look to uh outside your right window and outside your left window and you see like f like dudes in fox furry costumes 
running 70 miles per hour uh, uh, against your car? It, it was the rear view mirror, so they were behind me, sprinting after me. Wow. Interesting. What do you think? Yeah. They, did they, is that, you said humanoid fox. Did they look like little furry creatures? Um, it, it's hard to say. I don't know much about furries. It didn't look like people in costumes. Like, it looked like actual foxes standing on two legs. Wow. Did any of them do shines? What? Um, so, is there... <laughs> is there... Is there any other... Any other hallucinations that you that you want to share that come to mind? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I remember... I moved states. I was in Michigan when I started and ended in Indiana. Mm. And uh, when I was in Indiana, I got a knock on the door. And I went to answer it. And it was my boss from Taco Bell up in Michigan. And he brought me a birthday cake, which it was four months prior to my birthday. So I thought it was odd. And I stood there and talked to him for a good 10 minutes. At least that's what I perceived it to be. And then before I knew it, just poof, he was gone. I was standing there talking to no one. Holy shit! Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had a f- you. That's 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 like I can see. Like okay, when I think of like the three fox thing that you told me, I'm like okay, I can see like oh, I'm seeing something weird and fucked up in my rearview mirror that kind of feels like a dream, right? Like I can kind of imagine maybe what that felt like. But you had yeah, a I was able ten to was minute convert. Right but the, you had a ten minute conversation with a dude. Yeah. Wow. Can you can you describe any further, like what what that felt like? Like what did it feel like when he vanished? Uh, it was tremendous amounts of fear when he vanished. It, like at first, it was really obscure to me. Like, why the fuck is he here with a birthday cake? Like, why did he travel a state? come see me four months before my birthday with a birthday cake but it was so real that i never even questioned like this isn't happening wow but when he was gone and i realized that i was hallucinating that freaked me out that kind of had me shaken for sure were you living alone at this time no but i was alone hmm. nobody else was home wow Okay, and so and 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 it was and and at the time you were only on meth. Uh yeah, I think so. I mean, I've done a bunch of other things during my time on meth, but during that time, I was only on meth. And me- I didn't realize that meth made you hallucinate like that strongly. I thought it was like a, I thought it was like you know I've I've taken an Adderall pill uh, or two in my lifetime, and I thought it was like that times ten. I didn't realize it made you like see shit. I, I didn't either. I, I had no idea that was coming. And I, I might have been smoking weed, too. I recall my hallucinations would get very vivid if I was smoking meth and weed, and I was up for a few days. Wow. And you had no prior uh, like mental health issues? I mean, I was like depressed and shit, but sure, yeah. never, never schizophrenia. Like, I've yeah. tripped on acid many, many times. I've done... When, uh, Every drug I can think of, and I've never had any crazy. When when I when I get depressed, when I get depressed, I too see Taco Bell employees, but they do not vanish. They <laughs> they give me tacos, and then I vanish. Yeah, yeah, and I, I can, cry and I eat I them in relate. my car. <laughs> um. So okay, so you're and you're sober now for how long? It's been two hundred and eighty-five days. Wow! So you count every day. Um. Not every day. It's like every week or two I'll check, and then today I happen to check in. It was 285. What do you mean by check? I just Google how many days has it been since November 12th, and to see how many days it is, see how close I am to a year. So tell me but about if November. I check every day. Go ahead. What? If you check every day. If I check every day, then I feel like. I'm putting too much thought towards it. Like, I don't want my life to be, I'm sober, nothing else. Like, I don't want that to be the main part of my life. I want to have a life because I got sober. Yeah. 100%. I've had someone, someone told me once that they thought that, um, sobriety, like being, like, like, like when you're obsessed with how many days it's been 
since you've been uh, free from a substance or like you're in a, in a weird, annoying, paradoxical way, th um, like restraining yourself from a substance is still a version of the substance having a hold on you, which uh, yeah. is so paradoxical and annoying and makes a ton of sense. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, honestly. Like, I think people can get drunk, get high, or do something and still be free from the addiction that held them before. I'm personally choosing to stay sober from everything because I don't think I have the self-control to dabble. I think I would definitely go straight back to rock bottom and keep digging deeper. So tell me about November 12th. What was What was going on? I was staying with a girl at the time. Um, she also smoked meth, and we had, like, a super toxic relationship. Like, I don't really remember how it got to the point, but I was awake for 10 days, and we got into a fight, and I started throwing shit around and breaking shit, and she ended up just calling my mom and being like, yeah, your son's on meth. Like, you need to come get him and get him to rehab. Which I'm 26, so that kind of sucked. Like, I have to have my mom come take care of me, but ultimately it saved my life. Like, I was smoking an ounce a week, so. You know, I think that doesn't suck. I actually think that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, now in retrospect, like, it it was the best thing that could have happened to me. I yeah, 100%. Though, like, it, was, it was traumatizing for my mom to see me. Like, she showed up and there's mess out around the apartment right. like the right. apartment's fucking trash i just fucking destroyed the tv fucking broke windows right threw candles around <laughs> right right but it is amazing it is kind of amazing and beautiful to me because uh there's like so many people that you know i you know, i talked to them on this podcast who just have like shitty parents uh or like their parents no like, yeah i'm they, like, so grateful to have my mom Right, it's great because like either they have shitty parents or their parents aren't in their lives or like you know there's a lot of people who you know if they were tweaking out on meth and their girlfriend called their mom and was like you need to go pick them up they well, they wouldn't respond or they wouldn't right, pick them yeah. up you know so I don't know it's 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 an it's a it's weirdly a good thing during during my time of using i felt pretty selfish because everybody i was using with had horrible family problems like mm. they all had kids they couldn't see they all had parents yeah. that they didn't know or didn't talk to them mm -hmm. i had a perfect fucking family growing up i mean mm -hmm. like my parents were divorced but like i still had both of them in my life i had great siblings and i was there like self and selfish enough to be fucking smoking mess around my life away every day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've come um... to terms with it i don't feel bad anymore about it but then it definitely got to me. So, okay, your mom picks you up from school early. And uh, <laughs> what 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 happens there? What happens then? Uh, she drives me back up to Michigan, um, where I'm living now. Um, I stayed here for a couple of days. I got in contact with a good rehab facility. Because I was 25 at the time. I hadn't turned 26, so I was still on her insurance. So I was able to afford, like, a good rehab and pretty good spent probably the best 30 days of my life there like it was a really good time and it worked yeah and i mean like it didn't it's not done like it didn't work but it's working you know what i mean like i can't say i'm cured i'm fixed but as of right now i'm still doing good nice has anything replaced uh, uh meth like are you into pixie sticks or Overwatch, or what's your thing? Um, I play a lot of video games, yeah. I was playing League of Legends, which is probably a, a worse drug than meth, but I got up to Emerald rank, and then I quit playing because that was a high enough rank for me. That's and I wild. hate the game, so... Yeah. Huh? Uh, no, I said, wow, it's, it's, uh, I think it's there's, there's something I deeply respect about quitting the, the game when you've reached your... Uh, your, your emerald rank or whatever it is. League was literally a drug for me as well. Like, I would be addicted to playing it. I'd get up early to play it, sleep for a few hours, get back up, keep playing all day. And I hated every minute of it. So, like, it was good to get off it. Lately, I've been playing the Earthbound series. That's oh, been, really? Yeah, that's had a hold on me. 
That's fucking cool. fantastic games. <laughs> yeah, but like those games, like to me, okay, like those games, uh, like I don't know if uh, I'm curious people's thoughts on this. But okay, so to me, there's a difference. I don't really play online games. I play one online game. I play um, Super Smash Bros. Melee online via Slippy, and I fucking love it. Uh, but to oh, me, oh yeah, I love Melee. <laughs> To me, there's a difference between, like, getting sucked into online games, like uh, Call of Duty or whatever the fuck people are playing right now, versus, like, sitting down to play a linear, story-driven, single-player experience, you know? Because motherfuckers will sit and they'll, they'll uh, you know, watch you know, 40 episodes of TV. Like, normal human beings do that, Right. Yeah, yeah. I feel like competitive gaming, like games with a ranking system, like the ranking system itself is the addicted part. Right, right. It's not right. The game right. It's the part, ranking yeah. system is addicted. Right. Like you're you're in the online game. It feels as though you're addicted to like the kind of slot machine gambling, whatever the fuck thing of increasing your rank. Whereas like if you're like I'm playing The Last of Us right now and it's like I'm going through a linear story experience it feels like it feels like a different thing but maybe it's not i don't know yeah it's i don't find it to be addictive i play it a lot because i enjoy it i never played league because i enjoy it i played it because i wanted to get better and i was addicted to like it was like a self-reflection thing if i'm badly ranked i view myself poorly stupid like not smart enough to get there with Earthbound, I'm just playing it because it's fucking fun, you know? It is kind of funny that for a little bit you were living in a universe where if somebody had a poor rank in League of Legends, they were a piece of shit. <laughs> like, you, like, you're just walking <laughs> like you're just walking down the street being like, this guy, what a fucking loser, dude. They're probably bronze. Yeah, now that I vocalized it, that's kind of fucked, but... Right, because you know, well, then you, you, you reflect it back onto yourself. Yeah. Well, uh, I, my brother, he played League with me, and he had a fucking mental breakdown because he's iron ranked, and I was climbing, and he was just fucking like, why am I so stupid? Why can't I do it? Uh, <laughs> well, so I guess before we go, what's your dream? And Len, now that now that you've kicked meth, now that you've kicked meth, what are you what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go to Disney World? That wasn't funny. What are you gonna do now that you kicked meth? <laughs> I wanna no, don't laugh. That go to funny. nursing go school. I think going to nursing school would be cool. Um, That's great. Make a lot of money. I get to help people. Um, That's great. In a life of drugs, you end up learning a lot about health and shit like that. So wonderful. I think it'd be neat. Hey, congratulations, man! That's awesome. I, I, I uh, as the kids say, I love that for you. <laughs> Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you, man. Pleasure talking to you. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, no. Don't play oh. league. Don't smoke meth. <laughs> uh, uh, words to live by. All right, take care, man. Yeah. All right, see ya. I've never played Earthbound. I heard it's good, though. I heard it's good. I love video games. I might have talked about this in the podcast before. I have short-term memory loss. I think it might be because of... I don't know if it's just... Uh, I don't know if it's pot. I don't know if it's just how my brain is wired, if my parents were like this, but I just have short-term memory loss, so forgive me if I've gone on the same exact rant in literally 10 different podcast episodes but uh i don't know i love video games i've decided i've decided finitely definitively that i love video games i've probably played thousands of matches of super smash brothers melee and uh when i'm when i'm dying when i'm you know uh if i'm lucky enough to be like on a deathbed i've everyone imagines a deathbed, but I don't think you know, everyone gets one. Some people just get hit by a car in the street. But if I'm lucky enough to get a deathbed, when it comes, when I, when I'm reflecting on my life, when I'm reflecting on the amount of time that I've spent playing Super Smash Brothers Melee, I will be, I'll have, I'll die with it. I'll, if I'm, I'm, I'm fully sitting there, controller in hand, memento mori, aware that these, that I, my time on this earth is precious and limited to such an insane. Degree, I'm, I'm my my lifespan is but a blink on the timeline of everything that ever was or anything that ever will be, and that time is the most precious thing ever. And I'm choosing to spend it playing Super Smash Brothers Melee, but ha happily, happily. So I don't, uh, I don't know, I don't make myself feel bad about it anymore.
Attention listeners of the Therapy Gecko podcast. Do you know that I do a live version of this podcast on stage, in person, in front of real people, and that I'm doing this live show in several cities across the United States and Europe this fall, and that tickets are available right now at therapygeckotour.com or at the link in the episode description? It is all true. I'm currently on my third tour doing Therapy Gecko Live all around the country, and it is the most fun, sick, amazing thing ever, and you should come out and be a part of it. The shows involve a mix of material and presentations from myself, combined with a group gecko therapy session where members of the audience come on stage to share things from their lives in front of a big group of people, just like we do here on the podcast. Whether you're a fan of the podcast or you have no idea what this is and you clicked on it by accident, you're going to have a great time at the live show. Once again, tickets are available right now at therapygeckotour.com or at the link in the episode description. These are really fun shows. They're always wild. They're always unpredictable. And I hope to see you guys there. From Christina. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, what's your name? My name's Christina. Christina, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Just chilling. How are you? I'm doing good. Have we ever spoken before? We might have. We might have. Okay. Yeah. Am I, wait, am I ever talking to Lyle? Who? <laughs> I'm very confused. <laughs> you, uh, you, you know what? Who cares? What's up, Christina? How can I get you today? Um, nothing. I'm just, just looking for a conversation and some opinions, actually. Sure. What opinions on what? So, I'm in my reinvention era right now. Oh, very um, nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just went through a breakup um, after 10 years, so I'm kind of reintegrating into the dating world, which, uh, you know, it sucks, actually. (laughs) Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, it definitely does. And I'm trying to think of ways to, like, kind of bring myself out of my shell and doing something new with my life that actually aligns with my goals, but it's kind of sketchy. And I thought of you, which is so funny because I saw that you were live today. I'm like, it's Tuesday, isn't it? Like, am I going crazy? You don't normally stream today. Hmm. What what made you think, like, you thought of me to ask me my opinion or you thought of me as an example of something? Well, I thought of you for your opinion because I was so curious. I probably could have Googled it, to be honest. But, like, how did you even get into this whole realm of therapy geck? Well, well, I got I got kind of lucky. I mean, I've been making uh, videos and doing things on the internet for a good. I had been doing, I had been making videos and doing things on the internet for like a good ten years, and then um, I I just got lucky uh, with the uh, Reddit public access network. I got in on that at a good time, and I got in on TikTok at a good time, and. Uh, Lo and behold, I've I've kind of dragged that out for four years, and I am on, and the the roads have all led me to this moment as I'm talking to you. Have you always been a geck? <laughs> no, no, I I have only been a geck for for four years. Um, but tell me more about your this reinvention. What are you trying to reinvent? Um, I just want to get out of the corporate world and kind of build something for myself and cool. gain the that. confidence again. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So it's been, it's been really hard. I mean, so um, like I mentioned, I just got out of a relationship for ten years because I found out that they were cheating on me. So that was like a really big blow to your ego. So I'm kind of trying to find something to do, and I was entertaining the idea of getting into streaming, which I know a lot of people say I've always had that desire, but it seems so scary. It's like such a scary place to break into, you know? Well, uh, what seems scary about it? Um, probably just the judgment. <laughs> I mean, being a gamer girl for as many years as I've been, it's very rare. Well, not rare. Actually, it's getting a lot better. But there's a lot of negative masculine energy in that space. And like a lot sure. of judgment and perception. So sure. that's always a scary thing to be vulnerable to. What are you what are you afraid of being judged about? Um 
I don't know if I've ever thought about it very particularly, um, like kind of everything, whether it's perception of like self and image, because, you know, that's a huge component of it. Um, personality, just <laughs> anything. I think I get in my own way sometimes, but I'm trying to break out of that. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so, so, so when you say you're trying to reinvent yourself, get out of the corporate world and, and start streaming, are you saying you want to like start, you, you want to kind of like quit your job to become a streamer? Um, it is definitely a thought that has happened, but because of the financial security, I feel like that would be insane. <laughs> well, I don't, I only think it would be insane to, I, I only, I only think it would be insane to quit your job to do something that you haven't even started. Yeah, I agree so I think that. before I, I guess I think before thinking about quitting your job to do something, you should start doing it, but not to try to, not even because it might not be successful, but because you might not even like it. Yeah. That is true. I feel like I would be really good in the space, so it's just kind of talking to people, networking, and figuring out how other people accomplished it, and seeing if I can build some confidence through that. Well, why, um, why don't you just do like it? Like others experience. I think I might. <laughs> okay, and well, I do, I like your platform and kind of how you've done it because I love talking to people. Mm -hmm. And even though I play video games all the time, um, I'm not good at them. <laughs> so I don't think my gameplay would actually be that great. I don't think that uh, video game streaming is necessarily about gameplay. I think it's mainly about, uh, you know, personality. That's true. Um, I guess I kind of just have to jump into it. But, uh, yeah, you just have to jump. Like, like, I mean, you. I, I don't know if is this is this the thing that you wanted my opinion on? Kind of all of that, but also okay. like, am I just going crazy? Is this my midlife crisis? Is this the well, equivalent my, of <laughs> my, well, all, my my opinion is that my opinion doesn't matter. It, it, it's like if you. If you have an inkling of an idea that something might be fun and interesting to you, then ju just do it. You know, who gives a fuck? Yeah, that's very true. Um, you know, it, it's it's tinker. Yeah, you know, if 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 you want to get into streaming, just tinker around with it. You know, go download Streamlabs and fire it up and just start fucking around. You know, now if you want to, if you're if you're talking about like how do I s start making money and how do I grow and all that stuff uh i don't even think you're not even if you haven't even like turned the camera on and started and done the thing you know then you're not you're not even you're not even there yet you gotta just give it a shot yeah that's true the whole monetizing thing is just a whole nother piece of the puzzle and then but what I was the second that, that you at, what were you at what was the second thing you were like am i going crazy <laughs> yeah like i i feel like is this the equivalent of like the red corvette midlife crisis like you know, I just turned 30, you know, I, like I said, I've been in the relationship for 10 years. I'm now mm. re-entering this world and I'm just like, hmm, maybe this is not a crazy idea, but maybe it is. Well, some people's idea of a crazy midlife crisis is to drown their children in a bathtub. So I think video game streaming is not that crazy in comparison. That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, we need to lower the bar a lot in terms of, um, you know, I guess crazy because there's some it could be worse. Yeah, I guess it could. But dating right now really just sucks, too. What? How I'm, are you? How, how how long have you been out of uh, the uh, this relationship for? It's been about three and a half months. OK. Why are yeah. you on Hinge? What are you doing? Oh, I did try Hinge and it was um I just did not like it. I got off dating apps as soon as I could. Not really feeling that. I don't know how to organically meet people. So I, I do outside activities and, you know, try to get into a neutral space, but it doesn't really work as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've struggled with uh, dating a lot in my life and uh i'm also on on kind of a journey to to find a, like a proper um mindset or uh i guess i guess conclusion to it and uh i don't i don't have one um but i part of 
part of me like i i kind of wean back and forth because i'm like part of me part of me thinks you know uh you need to just learn to be happy on your own and then another yeah. large part of me believes that that is complete utter bullshit right because every single song every movie every conventional piece of wisdom has always told us that the most important things the, the most important thing in our life is our relationships you know and love and so it, it's hard to look that in the face and go yeah you know what i don't need it it's hard it's, it's hard if not nigh impossible um so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a conclusion on that. But um, I mean, it does make me feel better that I'm at least not the only one in that mindset. There's not, oh, yeah. like a lot of <laughs> there's so many people that I just see that are in happy relationships or like super happy, independent. And I'm like trying to find the neutral territory in between it. But yeah, like you said, it's kind of it's kind of shitty. I love myself. I think that my company is great. And um you know, being with a partner obviously helps a lot, but the interim is is like a really weird space to be in. Uh, yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. It's uh, it is a is a it is and at time and, and for me and at times a, a, a pretty miserable space to be in. I think. Yeah, Dep- I would depending agree on that. how you view it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, I I go back. This is this is this is the um, this is the happiness battle. Is how much of <laughs> how much of this is external? How much of this is is have you what 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 rungs on the Maslow hierarchy of needs have you uh, uh, checked off? Right, you know uh, your your relationships, personal achievements, respect, all the all those things. Versus how much of that is bullshit, and you actually just need to sit and decide for yourself and your brain that you are happy. I don't fucking know. Um, I don't think any scientist knows. I think you just kind of struggle to figure it out until you die. Maybe. Yeah. No, I would agree with that, actually. And now I don't feel as cynical and crazy because you also think that. Well, good. I hope that I'm, I hope, uh, I'm glad to hear that my cynicism and craziness has helped you feel better about your own. <laughs> uh, well, what, what do you, what game are you going to stream? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've been playing a lot of the finals, but I'm really bad at that. And outside of that, I'm actually trying to find a really good, like open world sandbox game. And that's been proving pretty difficult. Because I feel like I've played have all you the ever, ones. you ever play Red Dead Redemption 2? You know what? I have it, and I feel like I've only played maybe three hours of it, and I feel like two hours of that was just the intro of the game. So I haven't actually played a lot of it. Go play that, dude. That game is sick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, ra- I'm waiting for Grand Theft Auto. I'm hoping that that's going to be really good worth the wait hopefully yeah yeah that's it's a it's a you know it's a good reason to stay alive is grand theft auto <laughs> yeah. so i pledge to stay alive until minimum september of 2025 that's when i think it's coming out <laughs> um yeah well, what, what's, awesome. what's, if they delay it i'd be sad what's your name again christina christina uh do you have a, if you if you want to you can plug your twitch if you have one um, I mean, there's absolutely no content on there whatsoever. Um, if you guys want to follow me, you're more than welcome to. It's baked goods underscore. Bake, baked goods or space goods? Baked goods. So I went through an era of like doing a lot of baking and cake creation. That was also actually some of the content that I was thinking of making. That setup is a little bit more complex than just like sitting at your computer, though. So... Maybe if things go right, I'll end up doing some cooking streams and stuff. Well, uh, good luck on your on your journey of insanity. Uh, <laughs> you're, pro- you're probably not alone. You know, I mean, if you really want to, just go on Reddit and fi- if you want, if you want, if you any and this goes. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to anyone. If you want ever in your life to feel better about how insane you are, I guarantee. There are many, many, many places on the internet 
where you can go to find essay length manifestos by people who are much, much crazier than you are. And uh, that maybe that'll make you feel better about yourself. Yeah, I'm sure that will. I'll actually have to look into that. And you know what? I have one other comment that I wanted to make. Go ahead. I, you know, you asked, you're like, oh, have I talked to you before, right? So I called you when you got the sponsored stream by Jack in the Box. I don't recall oh, if you're still geez. sponsored. By yeah, them. that was a long time ago. That was like two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a really long time ago. Dude, I called in and I think I was the last caller of that. And um, the girl I spoke to, she was like, you know, what do you want to talk about? And I wanted to tell you the story of how we got completely obliterated when I was in California. And she was just like, ooh, you can't say any of that stuff. <laughs> She's like, it's oh, a yeah. sponsored stream. We have to be really careful what we say. Your whole chat thought that I was like, an advertising bot <laughs> they're like there's no way this story is real because i had to censor through the entire thing so if anybody here remembers that it's not paid <laughs> there was a lot of context in that story i could not say but um hopefully if you still have the sponsorship you know awesome for you lyle but thanks for the conversation i really appreciate it and you know have a great day dude thank you christina yeah that was your name. Okay, cool. I wrote it. All right. Thank you, Christina. Have a good one. Uh, 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 good luck on your streaming journey. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye, dude. You know, so it's funny. I used to... Um, I actually... I, I flipped on this, and this is not... Uh, well, I'm. Uh, this is not a story of me being like... Uh, this is not like a whole, like, I am an empath fucking thing. But... Um, I used to, like, be able to go on, you know, you can go on, like, r slash depression or r slash, like, there's plenty of internet communities where you can go to, um, basically read stories from people who are doing way worse than you to make you feel better about yourself. And it used to make me feel a little bit better. I'm like, okay, at least I'm not doing as badly as this person. Uh, I've actually gotten a lot of feedback on this podcast from people who say that listening to it has made them feel better about themselves because they're not doing as bad as some of the people who call in. And I, 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 I swear on my life, this is not me being like, oh, I'm like a cool empath guy. But lately, um, any, lately, it, it's really kind of the script has flipped on me in the sense of like, when uh, I see or read or hear or whatever about people doing bad, I really no longer think to myself, um, oh, at least I'm not as bad as this person. I mainly kind of think to myself, I mainly kind of think to myself, uh, it makes me feel worse. It makes me feel like, oh no, life for most people is, I guess, suffering. And so I don't know how I can I, uh, take... Like, I feel bad taking joy in a universe where so many people are suffering. Not by the, not because I'm so cool. I swear on my life. I'm really not trying to be like that. Um, just in this weird way of, like, why is my life the way it is and other people's lives are terrible uh and but it, it kind of also makes you feel it makes you feel bad because you're like why am i complaining about this bullshit when other people uh are also um have a worse i don't know i can't explain the shift but it's shifted for me it doesn't it doesn't feel uh it doesn't f relieve me anymore i don't know why um Actually, you know what? I do know why. It's because it's because I am Jesus Christ, and I do, and I am an empath, and uh, I feel the, the deeply the suffering and pain of others um, because I'm really cool and awesome. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. We're putting this in the podcast. This is going in the podcast. This is going in the podcast. Call from. What's your name? My name is uh, Zach. Holy shit. What's up, Zach? How's it going? No, dude, you have no idea how much you made my day. Holy shit. I oh, never thanks, thought it brother. was going to happen. Thanks, bro. No, What's oh going on? God. How's life? What's up? What's happening? Oh, dude, it's been up and down like a 
roller coaster that you don't want to be on. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. Um, I'm no, excited to talk to you. Night, you have man. a. I've. You've barely said anything, and I like your spirit. And I'm not. I've, you, I. I swear you. on my life, I'm not just saying that. I. I mean it wholeheartedly. Thank you, man. You're I actually right? called last night, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just. Oh my god! I never thought this would happen. You have no idea. Uh. I actually called last night, and uh, you was talking about, you know, how you were... De- I know you said not to talk about you, but it really, uh, it helped me, you know? Because you were talking about it, and I was like, man, even this guy can feel this kind of way, you know? No, like, no, we can, we, can, day- we can talk about it for a second. I'll give some context. Uh, so I well, was... I uh, sometimes, to- well, so, so sometimes, um, you know, I, uh, I, I start out my stream before I take these phone calls uh, by just talking to the chat on Twitch, and I was... Uh, I, I was going on a, I think, a half hour rant about being depressed because I was very, uh, I had a pretty insane weekend of of a uh, really bad uh, depression for you know a, a lot of reasons and uh, yeah, it was just it was really bad. I forget. Do you remember what did I? Do you remember what I said? I forget well, I'd what I actually, said. <laughs> I'm weird, bro. I took I took notes because you were making some uh, profound, you know. You took uh, notes. Points. <laughs> Not like crazy notes, but you were, you kept saying at the end of the day, and you kept you were trying to come up with the end. I was oh like, God. God, you know, I was like, what is he gonna say? What is he gonna say? But I was like, at the end of the day, you were kept trying to say like you have to be the one to pick yourself up and stuff. And I was just uh, gonna say like, even if you were feeling that way, it was awesome that like you still got on the stream, you know, and try to make other people feel nice. Because even there was one guy that uh, made me feel real good. I was like, uh, I'm not gonna lie, some of them were a little boring, but that one guy where you still had his shirt from a couple years ago, that was. That was dope, man. Well, so hold on, hold on. But wait, what? What? what did, tell me about these notes that you took. Oh, what, I mean, what did they much, say? Uh, I'd have to, I'd have to take them off speaker phone, speak, speaker phone because it's on my phone. Sure, whatever. Uh, you were just talking about um, like, like at the end of the day, you know, you couldn't finish your sentence. I was just gonna say, like, at the end of the day, you got made, you got laid in the bed you made, you know. I don't think I, I said thinking. that. No, you didn't say that. I was just thinking of like that was something you maybe were trying to get at. No, I think. Oh no, no. Okay, I think what I said was, um, damn, I never meant to put this in the podcast. Whatever. I think what I said was that you, do you, you like at the end of the day, I guess you have to help yourself. Yeah. I don't know if I mean any. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm honored that you took notes while I was ranting. Or no, if I'm but uh, anyways, that you other things. Like, I was ranting. I the other thing were just questions I would ask. Like, have you ever tried gumbo? Uh, yeah, I've had gumbo. Okay, and then someone already asked it, but the kill Tony. He said you were too uh, intimidated. I don't see why you would kill it on there, bro. What do you say? Can you ask me that in the form of a complete sentence? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, you. No, I just you. You were too intimidated to go and kill Tony. Someone asked you last night on stream, and you were like, "Oh, I'm too intimidated to do that." But I think you. Oh, uh, yeah. Tony. Well, so yeah. Someone asked me if I would go on kill Tony, and uh, I don't think I would. I'd I'd be very intimidated if I did that. Yeah. Um. You know who'd be? Sorry. Go. Go ahead. Um. And then, like you were talking about guests that would might be on. Uh. I would think like uh. Duncan Trussell, you ever heard of him? Yeah, no, I've actually, I've, um, fuck, I've, like, emailed with him a little bit. I want to get him on, but he lives yeah. all the way in uh, Austin. I'll get him on eventually. He just, he lives in Austin, so it's, it's kind I of I can't, thing, I want to see him in a gecko suit, and it'd be, oh, my God. Okay, well, uh, enough about the me. I suck. What's going on with you, man? Uh, it's just up and down, you know, the roller coaster. Uh, uh, I just, you know, I had a good little job, you know, it wasn't, like, you know, somewhere I wanted to be, but, it was, you know, good money for, you know, decent money i was able to live and then you know that didn't work out and then i'm working towards getting a job but it's like all the way uh, three hours away and then i just met a girl and she's close and then like you know it would be long long distance and it's just uh just difficult um i would have to like you know stay use all my money to stay in a hotel to basically you know get this job and stuff but uh i don't know it's just I don't know if it's what I want to do or anything. I just feel like whatever I choose is always wrong, you know. What's hold guy? Okay, hold on. What's let's back up. What's your name? <laughs> Zach. Zach. How old are you, Zach? Uh, twenty one. Cool. Um. All right. So you got a new job. What's this new job? 
Uh, it's just uh, like uh, labor work, working for like electrical companies. Nothing uh, too fancy. It's not like nothing I really uh, do too good at, you know. Not or bad. you know, work my way up at, you know. I, it's not really nothing you need a degree for or anything. Not bad, not bad. Um, okay, and so uh, you just met a girl. Yeah, I mean, we've been we've been hanging out. And she's great, and like she's really been uh, here for me. And it's just it'd be hard on her for me to be away, and uh, it'd be hard on both of us. And you know, and then <clears throat> it's just I don't know, but it's more better money. Where's you know? the job? Uh, three hours away in uh, Baton Rouge. Uh, okay. Oh, so it's a question of uh, should you leave your hometown? And your friends and your family and support network to go get more money. Yeah, and it's also like a travel job, so it'd be like I'd be Matt Roos for a little bit, and it's gonna go somewhere else and somewhere else and somewhere else. Uh, that's one thing I didn't mention. But there's other things on top of that. I just, um, I know a lot of people. Um, I mean, I don't know. The job is really not something I'd be worried about. It's like, uh, I mean, I don't want to go into too much detail, but like, um, fuck, I already said my name. Never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, people are really going to be able to find out who you are, you know, because you said yeah. your name was Zach. <laughs> uh, uh, you you're got right. a lot uh, of personal information here. You got to uh, be careful right. about uh, that. You're right. Uh, I just, I'd be struggling with addiction, not going to lie. Okay, all right. What, uh, what's, a, what's the poison? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm a, I mean, I'm going to sound corny, but like, a lot of people say they can't be addicted to weed, but I mean, it really has like run my life, you know. No, 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 no. It's not corny at all. Um, you know, I just I feel corny whenever I say it, but like it really has run my life. You know, I mean, it's like it. Well, it's funny because you can absolutely totally be addicted to weed. It's just, it's like, but they just kind of yassified weed. It's like if they made socks with heroin needles on them and sold them at the mall, then people would be <laughs> like, you can't get addicted to heroin. Seth Rogen does it. Yeah. I almost feel like a bitch if I say like, "Oh, I'm addicted to weed," you know? Yeah. Um. But no, it's a totally it's a thing. Um. So, how long have you been smoking for? Man, it's gonna sound sad. Uh, I didn't grow up too too well, but uh, I've been smoking since I was like twelve, thirteen. All right, all right. Um. No, weed is totally uh, addictive. I've tried to convince myself it, it, it isn't. I was fucking. I was tweaking the other day because I and I needed to smoke and i was like oh this is not good this is like this is definitely yeah, physical it, physical um uh physically addictive things about it even if like you know your cousin wants to tell you that he read on reddit that weed is actually uh not addictive and awesome and uh you know cures uh all diseases they're wrong <laughs> i say, yeah, I say that as like a, a, i say that as a daily weed smoker um yeah but anyway i just see it as a go ahead how you said it could cure meta it can like it could be treated as a medicine just like uh how opiates and stuff if you're if they're not abused they can help you know mm -hmm. like uh you know pain pills and stuff if they're not abused if you actually got in a car wreck and actually need pain pills you're not abusing them they actually do help you you know you can't abuse weed sure. that's how I, and I've, I've been abusing it you know i just because i i i've had a bad day oh i need to smoke a blunt i had a good day oh let's celebrate with a blunt you know i just whatever reason to smoke mm-hmm mm -hmm. Um, well, so, okay, let's go back to your job thing, because uh, I have some thoughts on it, um, uh, and they kind of can go either way, right, because I think, uh, like, when you're, like, young, part of me wants to be, like, you know, for right now, when you're young, and you're, like, like when you're 21, I'm kind of, like, chase the money and chase, uh, the career, for as long as you can so that you can like set yourself up a little bit better yeah. and also like you know i when you're like whatever when you're in your fucking 40s and you have a family you know you don't want to leave your family to move uh you know across the country or three hours away or whatever it is to uproot your life right but right now you know uh you can kind of handle uprooting your life a little bit better uh yeah but also that being said you know i've kind of i feel 
at this point, I've I've ridden a a bit of a roller coaster that has landed me on the conclusion that you know your friends and family and your network are the most important thing in your entire life. Uh, they're more important than money, and they're more important than career. Um, but I I think that you kind of have to ride the you might have to ride the roller coaster to get there i don't know i'm terrified talking to you because um y- you've taken notes on things that i've said and so, <laughs> no no uh, I, I, and so i'm like i'm I, and so i'm and so i'm, no, I'm terrified no, i'm terrified talking to you because i think you're actually going to listen to me uh, no it was, it was just last things you said last night because i was like it was like mostly questions i would ask if i did get on sure sure Sure. And it was just like that one thing where you were like, at the end of the day, you, you got to be the one to do it, you know? I think so. I Well, I was talking about therapy. Because um, I've, I've been, uh, you know, in a lot of therapy. And, and I, I've been kind of like, how come, you know, therapy hasn't solved all of my problems? And it's like, well, because yeah. you have to, at the end of the day, you have to be the one to fucking, like, do stuff, you know? Yeah, you can. it was just so funny. I was... Uh... Uh, you just kept saying, at the end of the day, well, medicine works. Some people think medicine. Uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm a fucking spaz, dude. <laughs> I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know how I ever got to do a podcast. I'm a, I'm, I'm, no, I anyway. love it, bro. We all love thanks, it. Man. We all do. Well, thanks. Thanks, man. You have a good energy, by the way. I think I, 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 I'm not just saying this. I, I think you'll be okay no matter what you do. You seem like a, a bright, positive person. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, another, uh, I know I'm, I'm a spaz too. You ever heard of Meat Canyon? He would do awesome on your podcast. I don't know if you I ever seen like is. his, uh, yeah, yeah. You ever seen like his other YouTube channel where it's not like, a, uh, it's like mostly his face is not his cartoons. He like reviews crazy stuff. No, I know who, I know who that is. And I, I like his, oh, okay. um, I, I like his animations a lot. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I really enjoy being in my own little, co- I, I feel like a, oh, a yeah. lot of like, YouTubers, they're like interconnected, and that's kind of their whole thing. It's like the, it's like, whatever. I like being in my own. I like having my own little piece of real estate in this weird corner of the yeah. internet. I don't know if I want to go to the the high school dance and mingle <laughs> it up. Yeah, I understand. Uh, um, I, I, uh, how how do you feel? How big of a like deal was it whenever you got like I. I I, I don't know. The biggest name I can think of is like uh, Doja Cat. Whenever you, she was on, like, how was that feeling? Whenever you were like, "Oh my God, Doja Cat's coming on." Uh, it was cool. She's cool. She was great. I, it was. It was. Here's here's the thing, man. And uh, this kind of rides back to the roller coaster that I was. This this actually all everything you're asking me right now it ties back in to I think what you're talking about. All of these like big career th- things. Like getting a big guest on your podcast, or getting a Vice thing, or getting a, a um, you know, what a, a billion views on a video, or getting to play this cool festival, or getting to do this cool thing. It's all really, really cool, amazing stuff. Do not get me wrong. Um. And it's all been awesome, and I've gotten to ride a, a really great and beautiful roller coaster uh, and have uh, really great experiences and all these things. But I'm going to say, oh, fuck, I'm going to say it. Oh, you caught me now. Now you're making me feel like a piece of shit. But at the end of the day, <laughs> go, go, at, sorry. At the end of the day, all <laughs> that really matters is like, what are you doing? doing you know what you know what i mean it's like it's like like however many views you're getting or however many like clouded people are associating with you it's just like what are you fucking what are you actually doing what are you actually making or creating or doing with your life and your time you know what I'm saying? Well, right now you're helping me, guy. That's what you're doing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. What right now what I'm actually doing is talking to you, and it's yeah, like it's awesome. I can. It's like at the end of the day, what I actually do is I do this show where I'm talking to people, and uh, whether whether there's millions and millions and millions of people listening to this or there's twenty, what I am actually doing remains the same yeah 
It really like I, I it feels like I, I I honestly forgot I was even on the podcast until like you mentioned it. I'm not even gonna lie. That's kinda crazy. Um You know? You're able to I, like take take a moment, you know what I mean? It's not just a, a talk show. It feels like a I'm talking to a friend. And so, um oh, what the fuck else was I gonna say? You got me on, Sorry a, for interrupting. on a soapbox. No, 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 no. You're you're a good dude. I'm trying to remember what the fuck I was gonna say. Um yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. Is like, what is like at the end of the day, it's like, what are you, what are you actually doing? I used to do uh, a lot of stand up comedy uh, before I started doing this, and um, I think when you're in like the stand up comedy universe, you get obsessed with the idea of like making it, right? Uh, yeah. Or uh, you know, of like being a getting on you like you're, you you know you dream of like being on Netflix one day or this or that and the other thing. And you can't like you get so um, I think entangled with the visions of the dream of of the results and the outcome of what you're doing that you lose sight of the fact that uh, the only real um, uh, uh, result is just more of the process. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you uh, like let's say you you start a um, a TikTok channel making. Uh, no, let me write this down. <laughs> Get the fuck kidding, out of I'm here, kidding. dude. I'm kidding. Continue. You let's let's say you channel? let's say you make a TikTok channel making face cams of Keanu Reeves, right? Okay. <laughs> and you're like, I'm gonna get famous on TikTok by making Keanu Reeves face cam compilation videos and it's successful okay. do you know what your you know what your reward is Views. you get to you get to make more keanu reeves face cam oh. videos right it's like the reward is just you just get more of the process that's why like big crazy accolades or whatever they, they don't they don't actually affect the the thing that really matters which is like what you are actually sitting there fucking doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like a dumbass whenever I yelled out like the wrong answer in class. I said views and you were talking about the process. That's the whole thing is the process. I keep forgetting, you know? Yeah. I was thinking about um, the end, end goal and you were teaching about me about the process. Jesus. But well, hold on. I'm not teaching you about anything. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, <laughs> I, I know I, I'm like, I like, this is all stuff that I know. But I want you to know. I really, really want you you to know that uh, I I am constant. This is not, and it, what I'm talking to you about are things that I very logically understand and know, and have not internalized, it, it, and, and successfully added into my life in any way. Because I am still significantly a results based thinker. I am constantly thinking I'm like, okay, I'm still I'm still constantly thinking about milestones. I'm still constantly thinking like, okay, well once I get here, then I can do this. And then once this this happens and this and then once this and then this. Which is and and which goes in and complete the way I actually think about my life I think goes in complete antithesis to what I'm talking to you about right now. I'm just enjoying reinforcing it to myself by talking to you. About it, so maybe yeah. maybe I should be I should be taking notes. Yeah. Do you ever uh you ever had a journal or ever tried having a journal? I tried. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Um, I've been I've I, on and off, but I've been keeping a journal for like seven years, maybe. Oh what? Yeah, I've uh, only been able to do like two three days in a row, and then like I'll miss a week. No, oh, God, it's yeah. not, it's not seven. It's not every day for seven years. Jesus. It's, oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what what have you been journaling about? Oh, just, I mean, I have to be, I mean, I've gotten, I mean, I feel like I've gotten a little better. Before, it felt like a lot of pressure, you know, I felt like I had to be a philosopher, you know, I had to be fancy, you know, write paragraphs and stuff, and, you know, I had to be detailed and stuff. But then now it's just like, you know, now I'm just writing like, you know, four or five sentences on how my day went. And I feel good. You know, it's, I, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like before it was like, I was talking about uh, in the morning I did this and blah, blah, blah. But now it's just like, oh, I saw, you know, this pretty bird, you know? It made my day. Yeah, sounds corny. I, mean, you know? I think I think I think that's real. I think seeing a pretty bird is is kind of everything. Yeah, I uh I try to uh, stay positive. You know, it's just a uh, I don't know. It's just whenever you know at the end of the day, you know, it's hard to stay positive whenever 
you know, I, I, I live on my own, you know, I don't have a roommate or anything. I live in a shitty trailer. Uh, it's a uh, crazy, you know, just a, not a good, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, just, uh, what's it called? Wait, 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 you, 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 you live in a trailer? Yeah, I live in a, like a trailer park, a shitty trailer. It's uh Do you, and you live by yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, uh, here's the thing. You live way better than most people in New York City. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you're right. Um, what? I mean, do you have a, do you have a lot? Do you have like a, a, a do you have space in the trailer to be a person? I mean, it's a one bedroom, uh, uh, one you know, uh, like a living room and stuff. And but it's just like uh, there's no uh, central air. My uh, Wash and dryer don't work, so I have to go to the laundromat. Uh, my icebox doesn't have a, uh, a light bulb. Uh, there's no doors. <laughs> um, it's just a... I'm, I'm, I sound like a negative Nancy, you know? You brought up a good point. I'm living better than a lot of people. Um, just, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I, um... Oh, man. You, I, I, it's, I feel so perceived talking to you. I, I normally... I, I, it's funny because I again I do a show where I know that I put these out and people listen to them, but in talking to specifically you is the only time I feel perceived. Perceived? Can you perceived? Uh, break that? Okay. You know, you know what the word perceived means, right? Oh, like seen. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. Perceived eyes, you know, and then seen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you own the trailer or do you, are you renting it? No, no, I'm definitely renting this uh, piece of shit. <laughs> no, I uh, I rent it for uh, six hundred a month. And uh, no, sorry, cool. that was a little rude. I mean, what, what, but, what do you mean that? Why was what 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 in any shape or form was rude about what you just said? Oh, I just uh, my bad. I'm I'm from the down south, so sometimes whenever you're cussing, you know, I just you know I felt like I was rude for a second. I was like this piece of shit. Have you <laughs> have you ever listened to this, <laughs> this show? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And there's been some crazy people. Okay, you can say shit. You can say yeah, my bad, cunt. My cunt. Bad. You can say whatever you want. Oh, that sounds like a nails on a chalkboard down here. What? Okay, where do you? What state are you in? Uh, Louisiana. Okay. Um, dude, I'm really like I I. I I'm not again. I'm not saying this to yank your fucking whatever. I'm really. I'm not worried about you at all. You have a good. Uh, uh, you see, you really seem like you're gonna be all right. Well, it's. I don't know. You have no idea. I was laying in bed, you know, just uh, you know, <laughs> you know, like a potato, I guess. Uh, and then as soon as I, whenever I was like, hello, and it wasn't like the, you know, the hello. This is Therapy Gecko. The line is either busy. You know, I didn't hear that after the hello. I was, sure. I was like, oh my god, it's him! So like, I mm -hmm. you just you bolted me out of bed, man. Like I was I was shaking for a good minute. You have no idea. You really made my day. So okay, so you're you're. Um, I want to talk more about your dilemma about mm -hmm. uh, Baton Rouge. Yeah. Um, what do you think you're gonna do? Well, I, I'm not too sure because it's just like a situation of like. The, I have a dog too, you know. I say I'm alone. It's just me and my my buddy. His name's Johnny Cash. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Yeah, uh, he's a, he's a, he's awesome. He's sitting here right next to me. I, he's uh, up my butt. But uh, uh, I'm just worried about him. You know, I, ha I have to find a hotel where he can come with me. I'm you know I'm not leaving my dog anywhere. You know, he's like my son. Uh, another son, <laughs> corny. I know I keep saying that. Um, but uh, then you know I go go to a hotel and you know figure that out pretty much all my money uh then wait for my check and then see where we go from there i think the next next one is like a couple more hours away and it's just uh it's scary you know because um like you know i'm i live on my own stuff but like my mom you know i can go to my mom or my dad's house if i don't want to cook dinner or eat <laughs> i say cook dinner eat a hot pocket that night you know uh you know what i mean mm-hmm mm-hmm and it's just, uh, when, if I move, it's just like, or I say move, if I go on the road, it's just, I'm gonna just go home to, or go to the hotel or wherever I'm at, not be able to. What, can I ask you, know, you, what is your, what's your ultimate dream? Like, if you could do anything, what would you do? Uh, I mean, 
my ultimate dream, honestly, I mean, that's a hard question because, like, that, I've been asking myself that too recently. I just, uh, dang, you hit me, hit me hard, Gecko. I'm sorry if I'm, it's gonna take me a second. Um, it's all right. Uh, ultimate dream. Uh, shit. I don't know. I guess just, uh, like, my ultimate dream, no matter, like, what job I have, no matter what I've done in my life, I want to be able to, like, leave something for my kids because my parents aren't able to do that for me and my family, you know. Uh, I'm not talking bad on my parents. They've really done better now with their life. But, like, the only thing they own is a car, you know, and they rent and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I want to be able to, you know, leave a house or something for my kids or leave something for, you know, future if that makes sense that's my ultimate dream unless you're asking like a job opportunity dream i will i i guess um i guess i'm asking like what you want to do with your life you know and and, uh, you, and i guess uh, you know a, a career is uh an important part of that equation but i i guess i'm asking about the whole picture yeah uh i get i really i, I want to travel for for sure because I don't know if you've ever heard about Louisiana, but there's really not shit to do here, you know. <laughs> we got a bowling alley and a putt putt, and then you know. Are you anywhere near New movies. Orleans? No. Um, so I so Louisiana's a boot. I live in like the the heel, okay. the, the back, the heel, <laughs> and uh, it's just uh, there's nothing nothing here. We don't even have like I live close to the beaches, but it's the Gulf of Mexico, so it's just not the best. And uh, there's just not shit to do here, so I want to. I'd want to travel for sure. But uh, I would have to make money to do that first. And I have to to make money and get a real job. I have to quit smoking weed. <laughs> and uh, it's just a bunch of things. Where all do you want to travel to? I mean, uh, I mean, I like to see the United States first. You know, that's easy. Uh, my aunt, she's a, my nana, she's a real big inspiration. She, uh, after her kids moved out and everything, she sold all of her shit and moved to Hawaii. You know, and I will oh. go visit her. Yeah, pretty dope. Uh, That's pretty dope. Yeah. She uh, bought, for like five years, they were just living on the land, living in tents and shit, you know, and then building the house. And then they got their house built. She And she, it's just, she's awesome. Uh, but I don't want to go visit her, you know, and then eventually go, you know, I want uh, corny again, go see the pyramids of Egypt. You know, I want, I have to do that, you know. Hmm. <laughs> um, well... I feel like you can do all those things. I'm yeah, I know. I know. I can. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to figure out. Well, uh, if I if I were if I were you, and that's really your goal is to do all those things, um, I I would probably see if you can try and t how much. Can I ask how much more money this? Uh, if we, can, I, can we get into some numbers? How much more money is this job that's far away? Um, so, uh, per diem, it's like, I would get, that's really, it's the same, same amount of money, you know, but the per diem is really what the more money comes in. What do you mean by that? Uh, so do you know what per diem is? Uh, no. So it's like, if you live, it's like you live, if your address is here and then the job is like so, so many hours away and they know you have to be renting a hotel and stuff, they'll give you per diem on top of like your hourly base pay. So you'll get like. For me, I'll get $110 a day. I'm out there per diem, so that's seven hundred odd dollars, not tax. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Give that so, to. so uh, you, this job that's far away, it pays the same amount of money, yet they are giving you extra money to cover uh, extra expenses as a result of it being far away. Yeah, but the but only that, but, problem but is, is but that's pay. not that's not getting paid more because you have to you actually have to use that money because it's yeah. farther away no yeah. so it's not a job that pays more i mean kind of, it's just like so like you get 110 dollars a day per diem and like i don't know I like you don't have to i, I don't have to spend 110 dollars a day to live you know and then you get plus the 16 an hour so it's really like i'd be making like a little 300 dollars a day something like that but did you? Yeah, you didn't go to college, did you? No, I never went to college. I want. I, I mean, I feel like I, I could. I feel like I'm smart enough. I don't know. What is? What do you do? What do you do again? 
uh, labor, uh, helping like electrical lines whenever they, uh, whenever like electrical lines are messed up or need to be put up. And the big How, trucks what, come. Can you? Is there is there a universe where you can go to like a trade school or something like that for for cheap? Not real, not realistically because of the money. Yeah. Hmm. That's a, what, about, what, about, what, about, what about what about like a like community college? Uh, I I'd have to I, I don't I mean I have I haven't really looked too much into it. I just know that uh, I have to pay for it, and that's it. I have to work to get the money to pay for it. You know. Hmm. Hmm. So, it all goes back down to money. The root of all evil. <laughs> mm. hmm. So that's why I'm thinking about doing this other job for a little bit, make more money, and maybe go to school for something. I don't know. Well, I don't think it's a terrible plan. But... Holy shit, Gecko. I can't believe I talked to you. Yeah, this was nice. I'm glad we got to talk. I'm sorry if, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know why I said I'm sorry just now. I think that's my default. <laughs> nah, you're fine. Uh, man, this was awesome. You have no idea. You really made my day. Uh, I think you're the one. I, I've been laying in bed all day. You, you made me jump out of bed and shit. Uh, cool, I man. appreciate it, man. You're awesome. You're awesome, yeah, well, man. That, you thanks, no Zach. I think, I think you're awesome. I think you're uh you're a cool guy. You got a brain. I'm not. I look. I I I know that like life is fucking tough when the economy is fucking tough. But uh, I'm happy to hear that uh, you you know. I don't know. You seem like you're. You just. Oh God, I feel like a fucking grandpa or something. But you just yeah. have a good head on your shoulders. I just feel. Oh, it. thank you. Um. So whatever. I'm I'm not worried about you. I think you'll be all right. Uh. I appreciate it, man. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, nah, uh, I'll, I mean, this, I feel, you say I've been nice, so I'm going to just be real, real quick. If you've been on, if he's answered your call like three times, please give other people a chance. This is, I've called like for a year <laughs> and a right. half. It's all right. It's That's all, right. all I want to say. All right. All right. All right. Love you, Jack. Later. All right. Thanks, Zach. Take care. Later.